All right, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Tuesday, April 11th, 2023 Select Board meeting. Um, this meeting is being recorded and broadcast by Cable Access. We have four of our members here in person this evening, and um, Stephanie is away and will not be joining us this evening. So um, we will open the meeting, head into executive session, and then we will be back at approximately 7 p.m. to convene in open session. So with that, can I have a motion to enter into exec executive session? Uh, a motion to convene an executive session to conduct strategy sessions regarding collective bargaining negotiations with Fox Row Police Union Local 379 MCOP AFL-CIO to reconvene in open session. Second. All right, and we do have to do a roll call. If we can just go straight down the line, please. Mark, yes. Dennis, yes. Leah, yes. Seth, yes. All right, great. So we'll see you back here at 7 p.m. Thank you. All right, good evening, everyone. Welcome back to the April 11th Select Board meeting. We've just finished executive session, and we are back. We actually have citizens input first, and then we're introducing John. Um, so um, is anyone here for citizens input? Pledge. Oh, yes, pledge. OK. All right, pledge. Sorry, I'll discombobulate it. <laughs> All right. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, great. So, did, did you say it was recorded? I did. I did before. Okay, yep. okay thanks. Yep. All right, great. So, um, it's L Bill's last meeting. His. Uh, I'm actually party. leaving this time. He's, I really am. I, I <laughs> keep I keep joking that like this is so non-momentous because we've said bye like a hundred times now, um, but it is really his last meeting, and he's actually going to fly. I think. Or are you going to stay? I'm going to stay. Okay, for I tonight, only he wanted to fly, and I asked him yeah, to stay. He said no. Stay for tonight. Yeah. Time. Sorry. But I, no. but I actually my last meeting will be tomorrow night with the adcom at yes. six o'clock. So, and but I'll be here for a good portion of the day tomorrow. I've got a few things I need to do tomorrow, but. So but Bill's real last day is tomorrow. Really so um, with that, we do want to introduce John again. John has been here with the board. Many of you, many of our fans that watch at home have seen him during our interviews, <laughs> but um, he's back this evening to have Bill officially kind of introduce him and, and uh, hand the torch over. We do have a motion. We could probably take 12.1 kind of after you say your hellos, just to officially, um, you know, point you, maybe just take that one out of order. So, so D, he was actually appointed. Uh, he was actually hit his swearing in as town manager yesterday morning. Okay. All right. But this is for the additional Other. appointments yep. that go with the position itself. Yep. So that that would be something you could do either now or then. It's up to you. Okay. All right. Great. So, do you want to just give us like 30 seconds about your first two days and uh, the transition? And we were feeling good. And yeah, I, I'm, I, I got to tell you, this is probably the most orderly transition a manager could ask for. Uh, Bill and his team have been fantastic. It's been back to back. Katie has stacked the meetings up. Uh, Got to scamper off to you know just get a drink of water in, in between every once in a while. Didn't even get lunch yesterday, but it was great meeting everybody. Uh, the team's been fantastic. The welcome has been wonderful, and uh, everything that I looked at when I applied here and everything I hoped it would be so far is. Uh, it, everything lines up, so it's a great community. I'm not telling you something you don't already know. Um, it's a community I feel lucky to be in, and uh, so I'm very happy, and uh, and I'm glad you chose me, and I'm really looking forward to, to being here for a long time and working with you folks. It's been a great transition. Yeah, we're, we're lucky for everything, Bill, that you did the last almost decade, and we're lucky, John, to have, have you joining us and for, for Bill to kind of transition things so seamlessly and hang on, you know, and make sure that we're able to do that was really important as Except well. So when I ask him a question, he starts, well, you know, let me tell you, 20 years ago, this is what was here. <laughs> <laughs> and then in, in two or three, you know, year increments, I get the update to get to where we are today. Uh -huh. But the knowledge, the institutional knowledge is phenomenal. So, but I have him on speed dial, so he's That's right. So, and, and first of all, let me just say, it's, it, it's really ironic, but, but John is actually starting at the same time I started here in Foxwood, age-wise. And we started the same month, wow. which is extraordinary when you think about it. So, but I will tell you, John is, I consider John to be a new and improved version of me in the, in the sense of what he brings to the table. Um, his, his knowledge in so many different areas, I think is gonna be a tremendous improvement. Uh, I mean, not only improvement, but just a different level that we wanna take the organization to. And I think I, it's a testament to his knowledge and skill level that he's gonna bring to this job. 
So I'm really grateful for that because when you see a transition happen, you always want to see the transition go up and not, not level or not down. So I, I, I fully intend to see this place going to the next level, which is a, which is a really testament to his, his work and the testament to the board for choosing him as the next town manager. So that's all I have to say. All right, great. So why don't we just take the motion to appoint him to all the other things that he'll, that he's taking Bill's spot on, then we don't have sure. to come back to that later if that is okay. It's kind of a long motion. <clears throat> okay, motion to appoint John Kadir as the um, municipal hearings officer into the capital improvement planning committee, SEMREC board of directors, town asset review committee, and MBTA advisory board as an alternate member. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, great. So um, the next item is the finance director. So we have Liz here, um, who is going to give us an overview on the process. And then I'm going to kind of hand it over to Seth and Liz to kind of help facilitate some of the interview questions that we have um, and take it from there. So. Great. Thank you very much, Madam Chair, members of the board. Um, it was a privilege to be able to work on the recruitment process for the finance director, town accountant position. Through that process, myself and Bill Keegan reviewed resumes, and from there, we conducted several phone screens and then nominated um, to come and um, interview for our uh, finance director um, interview panel, which consisted of William Yukna, Foxborough Schools Business Administrator, Seth Ferguson, myself, and Barry Lacasse, who's the Assistant Town Manager Finance Director for the Town of Mansfield. We did that on March 28th. During that process, we interviewed two very impressive candidates, and from there, um, we unanimously decided to present Marie Almondova as a finalist for the uh, Finance Director Town Accountant role to the select board this evening. So now I want to turn it over to Seth. We've put together a series of questions and we'd like to invite Marie up to uh, ask her a few questions. So thank you very much, Marie. So just for anyone watching at home, um, this is the last step of the process or the second to last step of the process, I guess, where um, this much like the town manager position, the finance director is a board of selectmen um, appointed position. So um, much like how John and the other three finalists came in and interviewed with us, this is the last step where Marie's coming in to interview with us. There is only one candidate that's put forward for, for this position. Um, and then from there, we'll go to contract negotiations, which will will be down with the board and Liz as well. And Seth will be our representative for that as well. So that's just kind of setting, setting this, the scene for where we're at and what's to come next. OK. How are you doing, Marie? Good, and you? Um, so it's, it's three questions, um, and I'll just, I'll just kick it off. I'll jump right in. So um, what do you consider to be the most valuable and or unique um, knowledge base skill set um, that the director of, of finance and accounting holds, so that George holds, <laughs> what is the most valuable, unique knowledge base or skill set that he holds, and how will you gather that knowledge and then in <coughs> turn um, share it with, with your team? So I think, uh, first of all, you have to love numbers to do this, <laughs> this work. Um, and then it's not only understanding it, um, you know, there are several certifications, courses, things you could take, but then it's translating that knowledge into a final product, um, which in this case is our budget book, um, in a way that the normal day-to-day -day person would understand. And the staff that we have in finance, we all have distinct roles. We know what we, know what we need to do um, on a daily basis. And, it's just having that constant communication, making sure that you're all on the same page, that you're meeting deadlines, um, and just having that trust with everyone. And um, my approach has always been, um, my door's always open. Um, if you ever have any questions, need anything, uh, or just want to chat, you know, come in, I'm happy to do that. And I do, not, I do that not only with the finance team, but with the department heads with the board members. Even residents come to me <laughs> and ask me questions. So um, I think that's. OK. No. Oh, OK. All right, so the next question. Um, Marie, what will you do as the director of finance slash town accountant <clears throat> to promote a healthy and attainable budget? And 
How will you hold yourself and your team accountable to, to meeting the town's financial expectations and obligations? Get all that? Okay. So I think, um, first of all, we've maintained a very conservative uh, budget process here, and I would like to see that continue. I do have some ideas or changes um, that I'm looking to propose for the next budget cycle. Um, and then as far as uh, the team, um, you know, having, we, we have monthly meetings, we have weekly meetings. Um, you know, my staff knows that, you know, when it comes to professional development, um, you're never going to hear a no from me. Um, if there's a class that you want to take, whether it's a certification or even a soft skills class, um, we're all open to that. And that's something that's big in this town. The town really invests in its employees and I've benefited from that greatly. Um, very grateful for that. Um, you know, when you develop your staff, that only helps them, but the town overall. Um, so I think it's maintaining the good practices that we have in place, the financial policies, and then making improvements or suggestions um, where appropriate and, you know, getting everyone to buy into the same process and um, that's it. Dennis, just a follow-up. So you've been here four years, you've seen how the budget's done, you've mm -hmm. seen George in action yes. over those four years. It's a very good process, it's a very clean process. Mm -hmm. It's an excellent process, but nothing's ever perfect. That's correct. So in terms of your view, in terms of priorities, if there's one area that you would prioritize in terms of improvement, what would that be? I think uh, one area would be having more uh, community engagement. What I've seen recently done in some other communities, um, for example, Lexington, they've done what's called uh, like this priority-based budgeting. Um, so I think if, um, as you all have heard recently, you know, roads and sidewalks are a big topic. <laughs> um, so I think if you engage the community from the very beginning, get a list of projects and things that they would like to see accomplished. And then once we're going through the projections and all of that, um, figure out what we can make work, what we may have to wait a year or two. Um, I think that's something I, I would look to improve. And then we're currently working on the GFOA budget um, book. Um, so I'm, I'll, I'm gonna be really excited when that's, you know, that's finished. Hopefully we'll, we'll get the award. Um, I think through that process what we're seeing is um, the GFOA highly regards uh, strategic plans. Um, so I think the town really should have a strategic plan that is tied into the budget process um, with some money <laughs> put into it. Um, so those are just a couple of things I, could, I can think of right now. That's good. Well, so this is off, off the count, this is off of this, not from the list, but one of the things that I've thought about in terms of the strategic plan is uh, building out a plan with projections and ideas and investment opportunities that may not actually be approved or it's just something that we're thinking about so that we're building sort of a holistic view um, without being constrained by what has actually been approved and built into a budget. Um, so that's not even a question. That's just like something I'm throwing out there, something to think about for, <laughs> for the future. But yeah, anyway. it's, it's funny you, you mentioned that. So earlier today, I sat in with Christina and a couple of our other department heads. Um, so ClearGov, they have this new product that's coming out called Clear, um, Clear Forms, I think is what it's called. Um, and basically, it allows you to create different plans. You could create a strategic plan, a master plan, mm -hmm. a land use plan. And you could have several contributor, contributors. Um, and it essentially, it creates this dashboard that anyone can see, residents, everyone. And it essentially, what it does is you, so you establish your goals, how you're going to achieve them. And as you're going through that process, you could update the progress. Um, and what you can do too is, um, you know, allocate budget dollars. So it feeds directly into our budget module. Mm -hmm. um, so as you're going through and creating those goals, you know, seeking the input of, you know, all the stakeholders, residents, um, okay, nice. you could really build a really nice product. That's something we were looking into earlier, so. Mm -hmm. Very nice, excellent, thank you. 
All right, so the third question is around your core values as a leader. Um, so what are your core values as a leader with the town of Foxborough, and how do you ensure these values are upheld by your team to encourage a positive and collaborative working environment? So I think um, just as public servants overall, um, I believe in having a high level of integrity, um, trust, um, you know, like I said, in finance, we, we all know what we need to do, and there's a lot that flows through finance on the revenue and expense side, and, you know, when you trust your staff, um, you develop them, um, you have that mutual goals and understanding, um, it makes things a lot easier, and I feel really proud of the team that we have there. Um, we've come a long way <laughs> from, you know, my first day there. And what we've been trying to do is build this great teamwork oriented environment where you have people that all love what they do. Um, they love working here and I have a couple of them here. Um, we all love what we do. We want to do a good job. Um, there's always room for, for improvement and just right. being open to change. Um, and at the end of the day, I mean, everything that we do affects the town if we if we make a mistake, it affects the town. So just having um, not only the knowledge, but you know the trust and confidence in your staff, and um, just doing the best that you can at the end of the day. Excellent. All right, great. Any follow-ups from anyone? No. No, I mean, just in my time, I think I've been here the whole time you've been here. I think I remember yes. when you first joined, and um, you know. You've definitely improved a number of things. I always find you incredibly responsive. There's even been times I've been on a meeting and I've like said something or asked a question and then I look at my phone after the meeting and the answer's already there. <laughs> like she's already watching and has got back to me. So um, I, you know, I find you to be very proactive and I think, um, I think you'll be able to continue and improve on what George has done. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm glad that you're you know, here and we're able to you know, develop further and are ready to take on this next role mm -hmm. here in the town. And in your career? Yeah, I've benefited greatly from being able to work alongside George these last almost four years now. Um, I mean, I've been involved in everything, um, things that I never even saw myself four years ago being involved <laughs> in, like collective bargaining. I mean, I, I'm an accountant. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought I'd be involved in those types of meetings. Um, but I, like I said, we have a really good team here. and. You know, it's good to get the full picture. Um, and then just at the end of the day, just seeing the direct results of your work. Um, it's great, and you guys have been great. Um, the advisory committee, um, all the staff, Bill, you, John, I know we have some plans coming up. Um, <laughs> um, you know, everyone has just been great, and I, I think what keeps a lot of us here is the great team environment that we have. We all work so well with each other, and um, we're always bouncing ideas off, off of each other. Um, I think at the end of the day, we love what we do. We're proud to work in this town, and you know, we we really all appreciate the support that we get from you guys. Great. Yeah, just uh, as an offshoot of that, um, you know, I, I like uh, Lee. Have been here since you know, you've been here, and mm -hmm. I remember talking to Bill at one time when we, uh, you know, he hired you, and Bill looked at me and said, "She could even be a finance director somewhere mm -hmm. down the road. She's that good." Mm -hmm. Here so, we are. <laughs> here we are. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Better right. memory than I have. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. So good hire, Bill. Yeah, all good. Yeah. All right. So with that, I think we're ready for a motion. Okay. <clears throat> motion to appoint Marie Elm, Almado Elm, how do you say it? Almodova. Alm Almodova as finance director, effective June 30th, 2023, subject to a negotiated contract. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Congratulations. Great. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Wonderful. So um, next up, we have a liquor violation hearing for the Foxboro VFW post 2626. Do we have them here? Okay, we do have a hearing notice that we can read, though. So why don't do we need do we need to read this? Bill, John. 
I think you. It's different than like a normal public hearing notice. So. It is. This is more of their letter for about the public hearing. Yeah. Yeah. So this is I not. Don't, I don't yeah. Think we have no, to. we don't need to read this. Now. Yeah, I don't think this is. It's the next here. one. I think you just note that it is a public hearing. Yeah. The next one we have a public hearing notice for. All right. Why don't we do um, that second action item while we're waiting? Twelve point two. We're going to have you guys come up. We're just uh, we're just doing a quick action, and we thought we had a second, so it, it'll only take us 30 seconds. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> uh, motion to accept $395 in donations for veterans, markers, and house plaques for the Historical Commission from Joan Gallivan, <clears throat> uh, $100. Garrett Peliquin, $100. Nancy Papad, $70. And Tom and Lucille Sabin, $125. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, great. So now, now we're ready for you. Do we want to have everyone come up or just you two at first? I, I'm, I'm, I'm easy. They could, that way we're not switching seats. Yeah, why, don't, why doesn't everyone just come on up? So is, if this is going to be a hearing, we should probably swear people in yeah. as well. Okay. Anybody going to give testimony? So we should probably do that. So I don't think want everybody raise their right hand. We swear that tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth, so help you God. Thank you. Thank you. All right, great. So uh, we'll let Chief and Lieutenant Fitzgerald start by giving us the background. Good evening, everybody. Uh, Mike Grace, the uh, police chief from Foxborough. Um, today we are in front of the board to discuss a, several liquor violations at the VFW in Foxborough and Cocasset Street. Uh, I'm going to give a very brief summary of the violations and Lieutenant Fitzgerald will give a description of how these violations were discovered. And at that point, um, then I think um, the other parties will probably be able to okay. discuss uh, where they're at right now. So on uh, February 23rd, around 4.30, um, this is when this uh, incident occurred. We are in front of you with six liquor violations um, according to town council, is, um, is yes. Pat on? Is he on? Okay. Oh, thank you. Is anyone else on Zoom? I just want to make sure we acknowledge that. Just Pat and Katie. All right, so we've got Pat Costello, who's council, and then Katie Lang, who's the executive assistant, who helps us with our licensing as well on Zoom. Uh, what I won't do is get into the section, subsection, and um, the small different versions of each violation, I'm just going to give a summary. Uh, the first one is a violation, but employees or members of the VFW were consuming liquor on the premises prior to normal operating hours. Non tips trained person serving liquor at the bar. Manager's tip certification expired on 1 2023. Free drinks being consumed at the bar by the VFW post members. And failure to secure the bar. And lastly, this is more of a, a general violation um, of certification that employees of the license holders are trained and certified in the proper services and handling of alcoholic beverages. This is under the Foxborough rules and regulations. So those are the six violations uh, we're here to discuss. And Lieutenant Fitzgerald will give a, um, a summary of the investigation and how the police department became involved. Good evening. Uh, Ken Fitzgerald, Lieutenant from the Police Department. So this was uh, back on the Tuesday in uh, February. There was, I try to want to be cognizant of HIPAA and everything, there was a, a medical, what ultimately was a medical emergency in the parking lot of the VFW. Gentleman had gone down, he was found outside. When he went down, it was not witnessed. Uh, at that point, based on the nature of how he was found, the area around him, some of the physical situation on scene, it appeared to responding officers to be a crime scene. So I was notified and I responded out with my detectives um, in the event that it was in fact a crime scene. Uh, that gentleman was taken to the hospital, CPR was in progress, he later succumbed to his, what we determined was a medical situation. So part of our investigation was to get involved with the uh, management of the establishment and review the CCTV footage to make sure, was there any foul play in the parking lot, did something happen inside, was, you know, how did, how did he end up in this situation? Because it was, it was unwitnessed, he was found uh, outside. So during the course of the investigation, the uh, VFW was very forthcoming, cooperative with us, helpful. 
uh, they got us access to the video. So, and they explained to me that the gentleman in question was a elected officer of the VFW. So uh, I guess in terms of a club, this is the closest thing you can get to an employee. Um, he arrived at about 1.45 p.m. before the three o'clock posted opening hours. He let himself in, uh, went behind the bar, poured himself a drink, began drinking. Another uh, officer, as they describe it, of the club arrives 15 minutes later, does some cleanup work, is sweeping the floor for about 15 minutes, and then sits down and proceeds to drink with the victim of the incident. Uh, these two drink for uh, about an hour, an hour and 15 minutes before the TIPS certified on-duty bartender arrives to open the bar at three o'clock. Uh, the gentleman who passed consumed four drinks prior to opening. The other gentleman, I believe, was two. Uh, and there was no, no payment for these, no record of payment, no record of any transaction. And that was the staff uh, who were with us tonight and another um, club officer, bartender, who I was talking to, Ms. Maloof, basically said, well, those are officers, which led me to believe that the status officer was entitling them to free liquor. Um, so as we watch further, the on-duty bartender comes on, and over the next 80 minutes, the uh, deceased victim is poured an additional five beers. And this person is TIP certified, knew that the gentleman had been drinking before. He didn't know what he drank before, but he acknowledged to us, well, I knew he was here drinking. I don't know what he drank. And he gave him five beers in 80 minutes. I'm not alleging an over-service violation. Those are hard to prove, but it is in that... It's in that, that kind of realm that it's, it, you know, it looks, it, it gives the appearance that there potentially is that issue, and I discussed that with the club. And can I just ask, sure. are they like 12 ounce, 16 ounce, 20 ounce? Clear, plastic, 12 ounce, solo cup yeah. size cups, it looked okay. like, yeah. yeah. Um, so this goes on, um, and we, we spoke with the on-duty bartender. I, he, did, he did have proper tip certification. He let us know what happened. Then obviously we watch the video, we see that this is a medical event. So that portion of it's over, but now I'm into the liquor portion. Uh, while speaking with Ms. Ford, who's the manager of record, she produced tip certifications for several of the staff. Hers was expired by a month at that point. Um, so basically, that's kind of it in a nutshell. I went back uh, to follow up on the 24th and get uh, I have a thumb drive of the footage that's uploaded into our report, that sort of thing. And so I spoke really at length with Ms. Ford and Ms. Maloof, and I kind of went over all the bullet point issues that the, the chief addressed them. I gave them a copy, in case they didn't have one of the town of Foxborough alcohol regulations, and right in front of my, I you know, highlight and circled, you know, this is this, is this, is, this, is this issue, this is this one. Um, and they basically you told me, admitted to me, and, and acknowledged that this is the, the practice of the club, that there are many people with keys. Many members have keys, many officers have keys. They can come in early. There was no indication that either of the two that were in early, there was no allegation that, well, they shouldn't have drank those drinks. They, they should have paid for those drinks. That was never, there was never an issue with them consuming free drinks before opening hours. So we went over that. And uh, they're very cooperative, and we went over this at length, and I, I told them, before this hearing, you need to make some changes here. You need to get yourself into compliance to show that you're trying to do the right thing, and you need to get in compliance, because if something happens between now and this hearing, there's obviously be more violations. Um, so they were, I spent a lot of time with them. I gave them a lot of detailed instructions, uh, what they needed to do, some advice on how to get this, uh, you know, situation under control. but. Uh, it seemed that this was kind of a, a systemic thing that's been going on for years with people having access to the bar, people drinking for free at the bar, depending on your status within the club, not getting paid for drinks, serving yourself, and basically all the violations we see. That's, uh, that's kind of where we're at. So now we want to see if the changes have been made. And um, there were some promises that there was going to be some. Okay. <clears throat> Can I ask a question that's kind of important to me? So. In terms of the, uh, the, the uh, deceased, and he had medical issues, was his death related to his medical issues, or was it more related to his, his state of sobriety and falling and hitting his head or something of that nature? 
So we didn't get a copy of the death certificate, but the um, the, the video we watched it, it didn't it didn't look like this was a fall. It looked like this was somebody who collapsed. Whether it's a heart issue, a, a major medical event happened to him. Right. What the alcohol that I, I couldn't say. What? Okay. Another quick question about uh, expired tips. Is that a yearly um, renewal or every five years? I don't know how often they have to do it, but obviously it did have an expiration date, which was, which was in the past. It's a three-year. Three years, okay. All right, so that's our background. Um, and this is in front of the board because we're the local licensing authority. Um, and we do have to make a decision tonight, you know, about what happens as a result of these violations. Um, Pat, do you want to talk, or do you want me to kind of let them know my thoughts first? Uh, good evening, um, Madam Chair. I, I believe that the summation that the uh, police officers have just provided is accurate based on my review of the, uh, the incident reports and so forth. Um, the, the role of the board, as you noted, is as local licensing authority here. The licensee is subject not only to mass general laws, but also to the town's rules and regulations with respect to alcoholic beverages. So any violation of either state law or your local rules and regulations could subject the licensee to sanctions. Uh, the role of the board tonight is to hear the evidence and to, in your discretion determine what an appropriate sanction, if any, uh, should be imposed as a result of, of these particular violations. Now, in your rules and regulations, you do have um, a schedule of sanctions for violations. And for a first violation, which I, I believe this particular situation is, first violation, your rules and regulations suggest a letter of reprimand and or a suspension up to three days or both with the option of imposing um, a reduced or an earlier closing hour to 11 p.m. for the establishment. So it's the board's role to weigh the evidence and in your discretion to uh, impose a sanction that you believe to be appropriate to the circumstances. All right, Christine, is there way you can quickly add those, um, the liquor policy here? Just I believe it's at the very end of the, at the end of the packet? Yes. Uh, I see the police report. I see the hearing notice, but I don't see. Could be page seven. Thank you, Chief. Am I just missing it? It's under sanctions for violations. Second to last page. Are you looking for the re for the license or the rules and regulations themselves? Leah? Yeah, we only have a four page. We so we don't. I like. I know we just they were just read to us, but I want to see them in front of us. And I know they were posted on another one kind of semi recently, but if, if we can just upload it just so we can see it as we're talking. So I think we'll continue hearing from you all. Um, and then as a board, we'll have to, I'm, I'm curious, you know, what the recommendation of town council will be after hearing everything. And then we'll take a vote to see where we stand as well on that. So um, with that, I definitely want to hear your plan. I mean, it sounds like there's kind of a culture of bad behavior that's that's accepted up there so we need to know how you're going to turn that around um and you know do you have is your tip certification up to date right now today as we speak <laughs> okay so, so let us know your plan sure so immediately i did my tip certification i had um a major medical incident in the end of october which i was out of work for um a major concussion for a while so um i did update it right away but that kind of like my medical stuff took over so um, but that's updated right away. Um, all of our other employees were current, so that was done. Um, immediately we held him um, after we had spoke, and um, he did speak with us at length and was very helpful, and we did take a lot of his um, information and recommendations right away to heart. So we had a meeting right away with our members of the, the board at the VFW to let them know that um, their thoughts on a club license are actually just their thoughts. And so we had to immediately implement all of the, the changes that were necessary so that we are in compliance with our actual liquor law so there were no more violations. Um, as far as the members who have keys, we um, recently took them back, like right after that as well. So the only members that have keys are the members that come in in the morning to do the paperwork 
in regards to like all of the veterans paperwork that happens um, the commander does like the money from the night before sales and the cleaning so other than that like there's no it used to be kind of like members just had keys um, to do like various like things um, and so now it's very clear like you if you're not coming in to do any sort of the office paperwork or the veterans paperwork there's really no need for a key so that um, removed a lot of that like gray area as far as they kind of just thought they were a member and got keys. So that was done right away. Um, and again, at the meeting, we went over like the violations that were brought forth and how that um, it's not acceptable to have any sort of drinks before the bartenders. The bartenders were also had a meeting as well, and they were made aware that immediately if there was a violation, they thought that someone had been there before their shift that there was there was no way that they were to serve them a drink if they had any sort of reasonable doubt that they had served themselves a drink or had a drink. So on both sides, we made it very clear that this was an issue and our liquor license was um, very important and needed to be followed very black and white, no gray area in regards to members. So the bartenders all were in agreement, the members were all in agreement, and the only members, like I said, that have keys are the ones who are there with paperwork and who <coughs> understand those rules as well. Um, so that was that was like very important and we started that right away. Um, and so then in regards to the drinks that were um, consumed without being paid for, um, that was um, not an issue after the keys were taken away and the members were made aware of all of the policies. So within that meeting with the updates as far as the rules and regulations, it seemed that's like no longer an issue as well. Okay. And remind me your name. I know we met Warren you. Warren Wright. And what's your role? I'm the commander of the VFW. Okay. And if I remember right, I could be totally off, but are you his daughter? Yes. Okay. So I remember that. Okay. <laughs> Do you think that there's any, are you comfortable with being able to establish those rules in this culture, given how long it's been around with you know, your father, like the relationship there? Do you feel like you can do the job you need to do? At um, this point, I feel like in regards to the situation that took place, um, yeah, I feel as though now is like more serious as um, unfortunately, like with this sort of situation and what happened, um, the, the alternative is that we don't have a liquor license and they're not able to come there and do what they want to do during our business hours, <clears throat> like be with their friends, have their sort of social thing. So I think everybody took it very seriously. And I think there was a lot of clarification that we actually, like what our rules and regulations are as opposed to what they kind of thought they could be as a club and as like a, like a VFW. I think now it's very clear. Um, and like he highlighted and. And so I was able to show, like, this is the meeting and these are the highlights. And so it's not up to, like, our what we want or what we think. It's just very clear that this is how it has to be. So I do think at this point everyone has taken it very serious and there's no more exceptions or gray area. Okay. And I, I do appreciate how forthcoming you guys were. I mean, I think that definitely... Well, a lot of people had keys mm -hmm. because we have a yearly election. Okay. I've been commander for 15 years, thankfully, yeah. <laughs> Another issue, but but they change officers, so we never take keys. We never did okay. take keys back from people. You might have been the junior vice, the, the gentleman that deceased. This was his first year being junior vice, so the old one didn't give back his keys. So that's how the keys came to be. A lot of the free drinks, I'll take the rap for that. We don't get paid. I've been there 15 years. I'm there five, five to seven days a week. I haven't gotten 10 cents pay in 15 years. Strictly volunteer. I don't drink there. I live in Franklin. I don't drink in Foxborough because it's a long ride home and I gotta go by the police station. <laughs> and, uh, but, so yes, we did. And, but that's more on me than anybody else because I allowed it to happen because these guys for their time doing what they're doing a free drink to me here and there was, I didn't see what was wrong with it. So I, I was, I'm more the day-to-day -day type guy that's there seven days a week, so. <clears throat> so how many people have keys now? Like how, I don't know how many officers, is there Two, ten officers, three. is there? No, less than that. 
I believe there's four of us plus bartenders. So there, yeah, there's the um, quartermaster who does all the banking and invoices and um, help with the day-to-day um, -day banking stuff as far as like the veterans paperwork. So she has keys to be able to get in. Um, he has a set of keys. The um, the other officer is the senior vice commander. He is the lottery worker. He does all the lottery day-to-day -day stuff. So he has a key to be able to do that. And then um, the cleaning, the one person who's the cleaning. So I think before too, like the culture was sometimes they would come and do their paperwork and then their friends would come like before the bar would open. So it, that was kind of like the gray area of the culture. Like they knew their friend would be there doing some, um, like the old, the man that passed away would be there and he would sometimes wait for like the liquor delivery. So it kind of got gray that way, but it's very black and white at this point. Like if you do not have a paperwork purpose or a cleaning purpose, then you do not come in until three o'clock and they don't have the access to come in anymore. And everything's like locked before then and not until the bartender gets there and, mm -hmm. okay. In terms of your rules and regulations, uh, do new members read them when they become a, a, a member? It's a privilege to be a member. Do they read the rules and regs? They, I don't know that they read them, but they get them at like when they come in and they join the meeting and then um, they would know them, but they wouldn't have keys to come in to not be able to follow the, the liquor license rules. Right. So. And new members are so f so far away. We don't even we haven't seen a new member in mm -hmm. ten years. Right. They don't join. Yeah, I'm just wondering about you know if if there is another violation, you know what would be the recourse? You know, do they know in writing that they could lose their membership if they file some? Oh yes, violate, definitely, uh, definitely. That's that would be un fall under our the VFW. Not even so much say this. You can't, I mean, you know what's expected of you as a VFW member. Right. We meet every month and everything, and we, you know. And, and a follow-up to that as well as part of our meeting with the bartenders was also saying to them, like, it, it's also a responsibility on our behalf if you had an idea that someone was violating and was drinking before your shift. Like, if they're in the building before your shift and you get there and you realize that, like, you are absolutely not to serve them and right. send them and then so they're also aware too that if that if that was a violation on their behalf they wouldn't they would be terminated right away that was very clear for us too that we have to follow these plans and they're all in agreement as well that they for their protection as well to not be responsible for serving someone right. because regardless of what we do with the license here there has to be a deterrent downstream agree you know, yeah uh, change of culture really right yeah change yeah. of culture Madam Chair, just a, just a follow-up question to the line of question you were going to, Den Dennis, and that was, you, you said that you, everything's cl uh, clear and black and white. Have you actually reduced all those things to writing for the membership? So yes, they, sir. So, and and it's, it's, clear, it's been amended in their rules and regulations? I think no, that No, not as in, into the VFW rules and regulations. Okay. So i, I got to be honest and say I wouldn't know how to go about doing that as far as, I mean, you're now talking about, national change in our charter. No, no, I'm, I'm suggesting that you have rules and regulations how you operate. We do, yes, sir. And so, so um, the members that have the keys, oh, it's only, it's been um, talked about with the members that have the keys, and yes, they got written, like, with your key comes a responsibility to follow the liquor laws. So yes, they, only the key holders got the rules and regulations in regards to what they are allowed to do and not allowed to do. It would probably be a good idea if we had a copy of that. Sure. So, so that we can maintain it in the record so in case that this ever happens again that it's been actually clear and documented that you did those kind of steps. Absolutely. It probably wouldn't be a bad idea to roll it out to the whole membership. Like, not changing your charter or whatever, but just roll it out because, you know, if mm -hmm. if Bill's got a key and John knows Bill's there and, you know, he comes in, like, just letting everyone know. It was rolled out at the meeting. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so, so it just right. wasn't no the people who got, like, the, the people who got their the written like actual with their like that had the key holders they got the actual written but at the actual membership meeting the m meeting that followed the incident was made very clear with them that this is what our new rules and culture and um and they everybody was very um okay they no one really was had a rebuttal they understood because it's really not an issue that they could have a rebuttal for. Well, probably because, uh, quite frankly, it was so severe. <laughs> you know, yeah. like, there's this is one that there's really no arguing, and I, I mm -hmm. hope you guys keep the closed circuit TV. Just protect yourselves. 
um, and all that. But you know, this this is a very severe one with a number of infractions and unfortunately, you know, a tragic ending. Um, but I do appreciate how forthcoming everyone was and you know, to kind of fall on the sword and say, you know, we weren't following up, but here's what we're going to, to do to fix it going forward. We, in, in my 15 years there, and I've been a member for probably 20, I mean, we're wrong here. We're not arguing that at all. But this place has come a long way in the last 15 years. It's, I, I don't know how long you've been a police here in Foxborough, but the, it, the culture's changed a lot in there. Do you want me to inject in that? I, I can okay. tell you, um, I, w I won't go back to I'm 26 years. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I was uh, a little boy. I used to go to the VFW and get my Christmas gift. My dad was a member. Okay. Okay. So, um, but I can tell you our calls for service down there um, on the flip side are, are minimal. Uh, they police themselves, and which is a good sign. Um, and, you know, that's why we're not really talking about the over-serving issue in this particular case either. So they we've have. Tr we've tried. I it's to, been a big transition. To my knowledge, we've called Legion. you three times, and I called the three times. <laughs> yep. The, we had a, and was a lot of it, some things we can't, you know, change, but we, have, we, we are trying. Okay, any other questions before we kind of go back to Pat? I'm interested to know how many members you have, and if of that number, how many frequent um, the establishment on a regular weekly basis? 46 members, I believe, we're down to, and... 10. Okay. And you are open to the public, though, like at night. Like anyone could kind of come in, but there's a bartender there. Yes. Yep, okay. All right. Um, Pat, do you have a recommendation? Or do you um, want me to make a recommendation? I, I have thoughts. Sure, ma'am. Fair. Okay. Um, the legal standard of the legal parameters, quite frankly, are that if the board determines that the holder of a license uh, to sell alcoholic beverages has violated uh, or permitted a violation of the license or any law relative thereto to occur, the board has the legal authority to modify, suspend, revoke, or cancel the license. Now, in this particular situation, <clears throat> while you do have a first violation, which is significant, as the as you just noted, Madam Chair, that this violation does have several subparts to it. There are six separate violations within the incident that have been described here. So with that in mind, and with the, uh, the severity of the, the uh, event that prompted the police department to respond uh, to the location on, on the 21st of February, I, I do think that the range of sanctions that are set forth in your rules and regulations for a first violation would be appropriate. Uh, it's always prudent for the board to keep in mind that the, the primary purpose of the sanction is not to be punitive. It's more to incentivize the license holder to comport with the regulations and to conduct its affairs in accordance with the terms of the license. So uh, a letter of reprimand would be the low end sanction imposed for first violation here. And a three day suspension would be the, the higher end sanction that the board could impose. Um, further guidelines set forth in the rules and regulations. Uh, with that range, uh, I believe it's within the discretion of the, the collective minds on the board to decide uh, which they feel is most appropriate here. Um, I think anything within that range would be defensible uh, as, a, as a sanction in this sort of situation. All right, great. So, I mean, I, I think none of us ever want to have these hearings it's 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 tough you know it's it's tough to have everyone come and talk about it and be on camera and you know admit their mistakes and you know i don't think any of us ever want to you know have to reprimand a business or you know take away a license but i think sometimes there's there's times that if it's so egregious you know we have to do what we have to do as well so my recommendation in this case um would be the letter of reprimand and the suspension. I just think because unfortunately there were so many violations, um, that that would be that would be my recommendation. Um, I I just think a letter of reprimand, given the number of issues that there were, um, would help send the right message um, about needing things to change going forward. Thoughts from the board? Yeah, if I if I may, uh, Madam Chair. So. Um, Pat mentioned um, incentivizing ownership to 
um, follow the appropriate rules along. Um, and the second thing that I'm thinking about is it was it's been mentioned on a couple of occasions was the cultural aspect of this, and so changing the culture um, where members expect have been expect and have been expecting certain benefits um, is is a critical piece of this. And so when I think about unfortunately the member who is deceased presumably was going to his car to drive away mm -hmm. and it was it could have been I, I think it was daylight and if it was summertime it would have been daylight and there's kids on bikes in that neighborhood there's kids on bikes everywhere and um, nine beers within like two hours -ish. so so yes so to change the culture I think it it's important that we send a message that that, that they can still be open but the alcohol is has become an issue and there needs to be some a change there temporarily at least to send that message agreement or other disagreement <clears throat> from the side i mean we we haven't talked about how long but I, I think it actually reinforces your messaging that this is the outcome you know that there is a suspension of x days and you know it just reinforces because I, I think that changes the culture for the 46 members and the 10 that are frequent flyers you know, they need to understand it's a new day. Mm -hmm. And uh, th any future violation will probably end up with a loss of a license. So. Doc? No, I'm, I'm uh, in agreement with, with all three. Uh, but at the same time, I commend you for immediately, you know, going into what needed to be done, you know, with the, with the suggestion of the lieutenant and the chief that... You know, you took it seriously, and you, and you did a yeah, lot of Yeah, we absolutely did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I, we, I can see that. Uh, yeah. So my recommendation would be in the middle with the two-day suspension. I mean, if, if someone's going to make a, a motion, um, you know, my recommendation for the motion um, would be to issue a letter of reprimand and suspend their license for two days. Do you agree with that? Three I days? Do, I do. Um, okay. I was waiting for the... Um, to hear the other side of yep. the story and um, if uh, these changes hadn't been addressed they would be very concerning but you guys did take on the challenge um, and I know it was a challenge to probably tackle that and, and institute these changes and I, I believe in, in good faith that they are doing um, making the necessary changes to um, adhere to the license okay. now Madam Chair, Madam Chair just, uh, just procedural I think you should close the hearing Okay. And, then, and then deliberate over the, the penalty okay. itself. Okay, so then, we've uh, heard from everyone. Everyone's satisfied with that? Okay. All right, so we'll close the hearing. Motion to, Motion close, to close the hearing. Second. All right, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. All right, great. And then for our deliberations, I mean, we could keep it at the three days. That's the kind of the max end. Um, I don't think we need to take the early close off because I feel like it's more of a daytime kind of drinking place. I don't I don't think for me that that's not really an issue. Um, but I do I do think that the severity and like you said, um, this is probably, you know, close to when school's getting out and the barrels right down the road. You know, someone did have nine beers within like two and a half hours and was going to drive away as well. So just to address it, um, yours, we don't operate open until the school's out. Just, to, I'm not like, I agree with what you're saying. I just wanted right. to clarify that. Like, Yeah, we, they were there, though, before that. They were there yeah. one something, right? Yeah, so that's no longer happening. We very much don't open until 3. Okay, okay. Madam Chair, just last, one last thing, suggestion is that you I should designate the days. Yeah, I was yeah, just okay. going to bring that up. Yep. Yeah. And the actual calendar days? Calendar days, so weekend days, or, or day, days during the week. Um, I'd imagine I'd look for a recommendation on, on what that would be. I mean, I think it could just be the next three days. Is I, I would recommend the weekends, honestly, just to make the message as clear as possible. The days that I, I, I actually think of the VFW as like a weekday drinking spot, personally. Um, I, so I don't know if there Seven is Seven days a, a week. Yeah, okay. All right. <laughs> so we could do we could do like a Friday, Saturday, Sunday? Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, we can do it for this upcoming weekend. Are you do doing two days? Is that two, two, days. Two, two, two days? I'm good with two days. Yeah. Two days. Any functions? Um, yes, that's a good point. Yes. Coming up? No, I, I, when yes. we knew this was going to happen. Okay. So I didn't form yes. the own. There is a function on Saturday. Okay. At the upstairs hall, which um, does have a bartender. 
So we could do, I mean, I'm fine with, with Thursday, Thursday Friday. Friday. I'm fine with Thursday Friday. That's totally fine with me. Yep. So. Thank, we, yeah, thank you. Okay. All right. So um, I think we have a motion and we have the two days that would be um, April 13th and 14th and the letter of reprimand. So that's your second motion there with those dates. Right. Okay. Go. <clears throat> motion to issue a letter of reprimand and to suspend the liquor license of Fox Road VFW Post 2626 for what are the dates? Two days. The two, April for two days, and April 13th and 14th, for their violation of ABCC regulations. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. All right, so we, we're sorry that we're here. You know, um, we hope everything changes. We appreciate your cooperation with the police um, and with the board as well. And we hope to not see you back here again. <laughs> Agreed. So just to, we will need the liquor license yeah, turned in. The license will have to be turned in actually to the police department for those two days. Oh, okay. okay. All right. So. And any, right. any, what do they have to do with the liquor? Anything they have to do with the liquor? I would just say, don't, tell your members, you know, close. Locked period. Yeah. No going into the big, work. The big sign will say, Say it up front. Even the key holders, so yes. we don't drive right. by, and there's two cars in the parking lot, and then we have to wonder what they're doing in the uh, basement. Just to well, the only well, the only concern I'm going to have is Thursday is our liquor delivery day. So should we should we change that, or um, well, are we allowed to go in and just accept a delivery? I mean, I wouldn't accept the liquor delivery. Can you change it to a different day? Well, we haven't gotten one I of them try. since last week. Oh. We can try. It's just our okay. standard delivery day. So yeah, we can try. I okay, would, I would try. Am I allowed in the building though? On those two days? Yes. You just you're, you're closed for business. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm just making a suggestion. You, no, so that's there's fine. No ambiguity of I understand. why are these two right. cars parked yeah. out yes. back, and then and, and uh, from a perception, I mean, I wouldn't have liquor delivered on those days. I'd try to figure something out. You know, mm -hmm. obviously you're not serving it, but um, you know. So, so uh, Katie, for Katie's direction, she'll put, uh, develop a letter tomorrow. Which will be hand delivered to you by by the police, I would think, because it's, it's short notice. It's only one day, so we can maybe have it delivered to you and then exchange the, the actual ask for the license. Mm -hmm. okay. Yep, this is just Katie Lang. Um, yep, I'll follow exactly what Bill just said, and I will just um, I can work with you, Lieutenant Fitzgerald, tomorrow morning, and Pat just for a letter um, that can be prepared, um, delivered, and then of course put in the file, and well, I'll notify the ABCC as well. And someone will have to pick the license up Saturday morning. Okay. okay. That's the place to probably Thank you. Okay. All right, great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good one. All right. Up next, we have the public hearing for Gillette Stadium's annual entertainment license. Sorry, we're a little behind. Um, if you can read the public hearing notice while our presenters come up to the table. Just move to the side. The Board of Selectmen acting as a local licensing authority pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 140, Section 181, and Section 183A, and Chapter 136, Section 4, Chapter 141 of the Acts of 2020, Code of the Town of Foxborough, Chapter 229, and also Stadium Rules and reg Regulations, will conduct a public hearing on Tuesday, April 11th, 2023, beginning at 7.40 p.m. in the Gala Meeting Room, Town Hall, 40 South Street, Meeting being held virtually, instructions to be provided when Board of Selectmen meeting agenda is posted. To review the renewal application submitted by Craft Sports and Entertainment LLC for the 2023 annual entertainment license. All listed events in the application are proposed for uh, Gillette Stadium. Application for this event is on file at the town manager's office. All interested parties are welcome to attend. All right, great. So I think this is our second or third? Third. Third, okay. So. so this is our third um, annual license for the stadium um, where we approve one license with data sheets for the various um, events that are gonna happen up there. So if I can just ask you to just go down the line and introduce yourselves. Blair Crane, SAC committee member. Okay. Jesse Nose, Gillette Stadium, Craft Sports Entertainment. George Bell, uh, Statement Advisory Committee. 
All right, great. So Jess, what I'll have you do is, is just tell us a little bit about the application, and then George, I'll have you or your committee member read your report as well, and then we'll discuss. Okay, great. Do you want me to run through the individual data sheets, or just kind of do the over an overarching conversation? Um, why don't we Why don't we start with an overarching conversation sure. um, and the changes? So. Um, I know the parking is handled separately, but you know whatever whatever things you have to hit on. Sure. Um, go ahead. So it's the the busiest um, summer that we've had with the announcement of our second Bruce Springsteen concert. We broke our previously held record in 2019. So it's um, people are certainly making up for lost time when it comes to touring and the, the types the size of the artists that can fill a venue the size of the stadium, which is great for us. Um, but it definitely presents a lot of challenges across the board for us as an organization and obviously for the community at large. So you, every event that we've currently got announced is contained here. The big outlier is um, the Patriot season, just because it hasn't been announced yet. Once it is, you'll get that data sheet. Um, we are in the middle of, or hopefully coming towards the tail end of our renovation project, um, the $225 million North End Zone improvement. And it's, it's moving along well. I think it's on track to be open and operational by the time, certainly by the time we get to the last um, data sheet in here, which is Army Navy football. But we've got on, we have a, a season ahead of us that is um, busy. We've got events like we've never seen before, like Army Navy, which is exciting. And then we've got, we start the season with Monster Jam, which is now we've had for almost 10 years and has truly become like a community favorite event. Um, Taylor Swift for three days, which is record breaking on a whole number of levels. And then um, closing out the concert portion of our, of our season with um, Stevie Nicks and Billy Joel, which is also really exciting because we haven't had her at the building ever. And certainly you haven't had him since 20 to 2009. So, um, the biggest, in, in addition to the, the this North End Zone construction project, um, parking moving forward being included in the price of our tickets is a significant change. Um, the biggest, it, that announcement sort of rolled out with our Patriot season tickets back in February, but it also is going to apply to all of our concerts. So our revolution matches have been free parking for years now. Um, as is with Monster Jam, we've had parking included in the ticket, but it will be a change for our summer concert series. So now everybody who has, you essentially have parking already built into the price of your ticket. So we will be doing prepaid parking on the stadium side of Route 1. We are going to roll out those parking, um, roll out those parking passes on a, on a case by case basis. So we just launched the Taylor Swift parking I believe it was last Thursday. Um, and then everything, that parking is prepaid it's considered um, a premium, but it, you are still entering the property off of Route 1. And then everything on the uh, P10, the P10, P9 entrances on the other side of Route 1 will be all of the free and general parking. We have delayed exit lots, which we have been piloting for the last three years. This, now that parking is essentially free, uh, the delayed exit lots were free when you had to pay to park. Now the delayed exit lots will be um, incented. Everybody who parks in those lots in advance, which you do have to make a reservation, you'll get a $50 Visa gift card um, on the in and have a delayed exit on the out to continue to incent people to use that. We're actually expanding on that operation as well to include uh, lots of both the north and the south. And then we have worked extensively with the MBTA to better round out our offerings when it comes to concerts. So people are well aware of the train when it comes to Patriot Games, and it's very well um, written. However, we haven't been able to consistently provide MBTA service for our concerts, and this will be the first year that all but one of our shows will have um, not only service from the north, but from the south as well. So we will have trains coming in from Boston and Providence for all of our concerts, um, with the exception of one that falls on a weekday, um, because obviously we, we share those lines with the commuter rail. So there, we, it took a lot of work and a lot of coordination, but we're really excited to have that um, up and running for a season as busy as this one. I think two. that's two. two. Thanks, Chief. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> All right, I'm just looking through your notes to see if there's any other bullets I want to mm -hmm. call out. Um, hey. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Any changes for Foxborough residents? No, so the Foxborough resident park, you mean with respect to the Patriot season? Yes. No changes. The lot that 
um, Foxborough residents are currently parking in is retail space that was announced a couple of months ago is going to be developed into Hobby Lobby. So that pad, right now residents are just parking in the actual retail space and the pad is undeveloped. I believe they're going to break ground very soon. So for the 2023 into 24 Patriot season, Foxborough residents are going to be parking in that same exact retail space. It is going to be a little bit smaller because the construction laydown area for Hobby Lobby is going to eat into the parking lot a little bit, but there's plenty of space to accommodate all of the residents who have resident parking. So it, that's my very long and protracted way of saying, no, nothing's going to change and you're going to be in the same spot. <laughs> It'll look a little bit different. but. All right, and George, we have um, a note from you with a number of the same um, items. Anything else you want to call out from the review committee? Well, I just, in great, general, great um, you know, I want to say that we had a great uh, meeting of all town uh, boards as part of our review meeting. And so, and with the format that uh, had been set forward in terms of the annual license, the parameters of it, it made it really, um, eye-opening but easy you know I mean the end times to the concerts it's well laid out Jess had it had good comments in terms of you know that no issues they understand um, you know again the background license the you know I would say you know we're looking forward to it um, total cooperation from um, police and fire so I thought it was very well laid out and in terms of the comments that we made um, I think the one thing that, that, that Jess was, you know, very open about is the Luke Combs concert. There are going to be two stages that will be outside of the stadium. But in order for people to access them, they have to go into the stadium. And I think that will be helpful based on the fact that it's a festival-style concert. It starts early. We, we, um, we've done that before, yeah, though, haven't we? We, it'll, oh, it'll actually look just like Monster Jam, most likely. The oh, only yeah. reason we don't have a set footprint for that yet is because we haven't actually seen it up and running. So we have a team going out, I think it's next weekend, um, or it could be the week after, to either D Detroit or Nashville to look at how they've operationalized this setup. So the event, the ticketed event begins at 545. That um, festival space opens somewhere between 2 and 245. So it is a little bit earlier and it's, it's um, emerging artists and it's essentially an extension of the stadium footprint, which is exactly how we operate Monster Jam. I saw that for another yeah. festival though. Did it get canceled because of COVID maybe? Oh no, you're thinking of, we did, we had the Mad Decent block that, party. That's it, yeah. And that was going to be the yeah. same, that was going to be far more extensive okay but, but yeah concept. it was going to be a similar concept okay. and then that ended up um folding before it okay to us. And we just thought that was a great uh opportunity to pull people into the lot who on a country music festival type atmosphere would stay out mm -hmm. longer before main act but mm -hmm. i think once they hear the music and well, that was a good idea yeah. so will the parking lots open based on the festival start time or based on the They'll open based on the ticketed event ticketed start time event. of 545 yeah okay all right and then my biggest question is always you know police and fire public safety do you feel satisfied and have everything you need related to everything that's in the application yes as the um, as the licensing process has evolved I feel it's getting better and better mm -hmm. Jess and her team obviously with Dan Murphy um, they have brought in, um, I'm not sure, John Flaherty's new title mm -hmm. to kind of oversee multiple levels within the craft group. Um, has absolutely been fantastic to, uh, to work with. Bill Christensen, who, who's the vice president of Team Ops, and Joe Parr, who runs their is game day security um, operator. They work hand in hand um, with all the um, police and fire. Uh, we recently just had um, the 32 police chiefs and commanders down and bill and joe came down and they talked about um and thanked the officers and the departments for their support um just didn't talk about it but there's many other things that they're they're doing for example with the mbta trains uh, the craft group's going to supplement if the if the train's not filled for a concert they're going to pay the difference to make sure that train keeps going which is fantastic uh especially on a, um for some of the traffic um, the army navy game is just so dynamic what it's going to bring to the community mm -hmm. I mean, <clears throat> the steering groups, uh, probably the football is going to run through the center of town that they, from the marathon is, it's going to be excitement at all levels and, and really highlight the, um, the need to, um, 
to bring attention for the Army and armed services and, and people enlisting. Um, so many programs have been happening up at Gillette for veterans. If you've been watching, um, everything from education with the superintendents to, um, to, to funding the school programs, it's, it's been awesome. Um, we have um, taken on uh, some challenges with the, uh, the parking. As we foresee, uh, this is a big change. I don't think we've seen this change and I don't know how far back, but I think um, based on the track, we don't have to adjust the traffic management plan. The goal is that the cars are gonna get in faster. Um, I don't think it's gonna all go into Gillette. I think football fans are still gonna um, go to some of the satellite lots and we'll have that, um, that meeting with all of them as well. We have, so it's taken off. Our, the police compound um, is being demolished. And so we can build a full incident command um, station so for all police, fire, um, and security inside Gillette. This is a big update. We haven't seen this in 20 years. They're spending millions of dollars. So that way our incident command rollout on game day is improved. Um, and they have been great to work with in relocating our police compound uh, permanently. It won't be done immediately. It's going to take a little bit of time through design, but in the next year, hopefully, we'll have that. So the police department will be operating out of a construction trailer. Um, it's, it's a nice one, actually. I saw it. It's, it's going to meet all of our requirements. Um, so otherwise, um, all these events um, that come up, we're never surprised. Mm -hmm. There is meeting beyond meeting. Even this meeting is probably our fourth meeting to talk <laughs> about the events. And any time we have to do any kind of pre-work or um, kind of do our homework on an event that's um, been in the country beforehand, we are able to reach out to those law enforcement agencies and get all that information prior. So we're, we're in a good spot. It's, it's a good team. And um, I like to say I'm looking forward to a busy season, but uh, <laughs> uh, it's, you know, pros and cons. I'll say, leave it at that. A lot of Saturday nights. Yeah, it's a lot of weekends, yeah. but I mean, it's good I, for the community. You know, and lastly, I'm going to say is the rewards program. This isn't even in my wheelhouse right now, but they have the, the craft group. We had this when the stadium came into place 20 years ago. But they have, uh, and Lindsay Conniff has really been pushing the rewards program for Foxborough residents, for people to sign up, for pops, possibly getting Very tickets impressive. that never make it. Um, so it does give you an advantage. You know, may not always get something, but anything gets released. They do their best to offer those to Foxborough residents. Yeah. So um, that's a plus. Yeah. Thank you. And I will say, um, I've, I've peppered um my gosh, why am I doing this, Jess? I was going to call you Lindsay. <laughs> <laughs> I've peppered Jess with a lot of questions kind of leading up to this, and I do want to call out, I think John Flaherty's new role in operations has been really critical. I think it really filled a gap that existed a little bit before. Yes. So, um, John's our, our, our senior vice president. He just had his one-year anniversary with us. Oh, all right. It was a, yeah, and that was a new role that was created. It wasn't an existing role within the organization. He came to us from, um, he was in logistics operations for JetBlue at Logan. So he's handling a lot of this operation stuff that I think is being handled a little bit more seamlessly now, mm -hmm. um, having someone in that role. So I think it's it's really been a big help. Um, and have anytime I've reached out to him with an idea or something, he's he's extremely responsive. So um, I think that was a, a great improvement on your side as well. Yeah, so that's right. um, any questions from the board? No. no? Okay. <clears throat> Anyone in the public here with it is a public hearing? No. Okay, so we'll close the public hearing. <coughs> uh, motion to close the public hearing. Second. All right, all those in favor? Aye. All right, and then I think we are ready for a motion. Okay, motion to approve the uh, 2023 annual entertainment license for craft sports and entertainment group, Gillette Stadium, subject to the terms and conditions of the license contained therein. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Hi. All right, great. Thank, thank you so you. much, and thank you, thank you to your committee for all yeah, the work. No, I thought it was so. important to introduce uh, Blair. He's uh, vice chair and somebody that uh, is really taking on a lot uh, to help me. We'll be at every event. Uh, Staffing event the, the line, the phone uh, line. Absolutely. He's actually, thank you for uh, doing that. his work is over in Norfolk, although oh, okay. he's a Foxborough resident. He's uh, director of public uh, works. So okay, great. He brings a lot to us. Thank you, Blair. Thank you. Thank have you. Have a great night. Have a good night. All right, and we are a little behind. Sorry, we have quite a, quite a media agenda tonight. Um, so next up, we have review of the all alcohol license for um, My Pearl. 
I just ask you to come up. And we do have a public hearing notice, so we're just going to read that quickly, and then I'll ask you to introduce yourselves and tell us about your application. <clears throat> the Board of Selectmen, acting as a local licensing authority pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 138, will conduct a public hearing on Tuesday, April 11th, 2023, beginning at 7.30 p.m. in the Gala Meeting Room, Town Hall, 40 South Street, Foxville, Mass., on the application of a transfer of license of an on-premises annual all-alcohol beverages license from Harvest Group, Inc., doing business as My Pearl, 121 Main Street, Foxborough, Mass., to S-Stream Enterprises, Foxborough, doing business as My Pearl, Henry Cheng, General Manager. All interested parties are welcome to attend. All right, great. So we will take um, separate motions on the entertainment and common Vic license and the all entertainment, but feel free to just tell us about both applications as a whole package, kind of as, as you go through your presentation. Sure. Uh, good evening, everyone. Andrew Upton, attorney for the applicant from Upton, Connell and Devlin in Boston. With me is Henry Cheng, the proposed manager of record and the 100% owner of the entity purchasing the business. Um, typically, we talk about the uh, public need for a license at this location. Uh, I believe that is already established because this exact restaurant has been there for just about 10 years. Um, Mr. Chang plans to operate the restaurant as is. Um, he's gonna do a little bit of cleaning. He's gonna add some of his specialized dishes to the menu, but otherwise the hours, the floor plan, the facade, the interior, most of the menu, uh, will be exactly the same as, as it has been. Um, he's, he's looking forward to taking over, sprucing it up a little, adding a little of his own uh, culinary approach. But other than that, it's going to be pretty much exactly the same. Um, from there, we talk about the character and fitness of the applicant. Uh, Mr. Cheng has 40 years of experience running Asian restaurants. He owned his own restaurant in Malden. He owned his own restaurant in Lexington. Both of those had liquor licenses, were approved by the ABCC. In 40 years of operation, he has never had a violation. Uh, he is TIPS trained, his wife is TIPS trained, the one bartender that they have hired is TIPS trained, uh, and he plans to do TIPS training for all servers and bartenders that get hired, but so far only three people are hired. Uh, he's also reached out to the uh, gentleman at Tavolino and Fox Cares to get involved with that. Um, as I said, he has plenty of experience. He is well capitalized. He's secured financing from a bank already to do this purchase and to put a little money in the building. Um, and lastly, I will say the reason he is coming to Foxborough is because, as you may know, the Marr family owned this restaurant for 10 years. And Mr. Cheng uh, was a high school friend of Mr. Marr and Mrs. Marr. Um, and has known them ever since. He opened his restaurant in Lexington when they opened this restaurant, and they've been friends and colleagues ever since, and Mrs. Marr saw this as an opportunity to exit the business for herself well, keeping it going, and having a friend operate it. Okay. So with that, we're certainly glad to answer any other questions, but that's basically the overview. Okay. Any questions from the, the board? Interested to know if you're maintaining the prior or the other restaurants or is this the primary now no i i, I don't have the the prior restaurant the, the other okay. restaurant is sold okay but i'm <clears throat> just this one right okay now. so your time's dedicated to this yes one. Yeah. yes okay. yeah thank you and you said you're going to keep the existing staff and oh. chef and all the people that are there currently not all of them okay, okay. some of them were willing to stay and welcome them to stay but uh, a lot of them will move on to their own <coughs> other, other group. Okay. We so. appreciate you sending your TIPS certifications in with your applications, yeah. too. That's always always very helpful and see that you had it before this as well. So, yeah. um, all right. So, um, I don't have any other questions. Anyone from the public? It is a public hearing. No? Nope. <laughs> okay. Why don't we uh, move to close the public <coughs> hearing? Okay. Ma Madam Chair, we've also submitted some... Uh, photos of what it looks like, as well as some uh, proposed menus. Okay, yeah, we have the menu here. So, yeah, uh, I, I, if it pleases the board, I have not 
yet had dinner, so I don't want to have too big a discussion of yeah, the menu because it would. I, <laughs> <laughs> but we'd certainly be glad to answer any questions. I about see that. the sushi still on there, and yeah, sushi is gonna be so, still my main yeah. uh, focus on. Okay. All right, so I think Good. we could take a motion to close the public hearing. Uh, motion to close the public hearing. Second. All right, all those in favor? Aye. It looks like we lost Doc for a quick break. Okay. Um, all right, so why don't we go ahead and take the motion for the other ones without him. I don't think he's heard everything, so we can vote with the three of us. <clears throat> okay, motion to approve the transfer of all alcohol liquor license from Harvest Group, Inc. to S-Stream Enterprise from My Pearl Restaurant. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? And then we just have a separate motion for your, for your common VIC and entertainment license. Thank you. Okay, that's right here. Motion to approve the common VIC and entertainment license for S-Stream Enterprise doing business as MyPro. Second. All right, any further discussion? All those in favor? Okay. All right, welcome to Foxboro. We're excited, you, yeah. we're excited to have you, so many yeah. Continued success Plus, in the well established you. restaurant. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. All right. All right, so up next we have the annual town meeting warrant. And I think there's one other item on that with the entertainment license. Did you do that too? Uh, you did it? Okay, great. Yeah, yeah we did yeah. it. Yeah, oh, so, yep, yeah we did the common Vic. Yep. I okay. apologize. Thank you. All right, so up next we have the annual town meeting warrant. Um, and we are reviewing and voting on the finalized warrant, but I did want to bring Article 21 specifically for discussion. I was not at ADCOM last Wednesday, um, but I heard that there was some discussion on this one, and this is the one for the change to the town bylaw regarding meeting time and place. Um, so that bylaw, I had asked if we could bring it up, just you know, being chair and seeing the way our bylaw was written, there wasn't a level of flexibility that I thought that we may need, you know, coming out of COVID. Um, it is written in there that it's a very specific time and place. And, um, you know, given all we've learned coming out of the pandemic, I had thought that, you know, we would change the bylaw to have it be a time and place set forth by the board. Um, I thought that this would be a Warren article that was kind of a no-brainer. I talked about it in ADCOM. I talked with Rafaela, who's assigned to this one. Um, everyone seemed to be on board. And then, Frank, I had heard that at the last ADCOM meeting, you had some concerns about it. So I wanted to just see if we need to amend it, if we leave it as is. I, I was kind of surprised um, to hear that there was some concerns and issues that late. So I just wanted to talk about it tonight because ADCOM is, I think, due to vote tomorrow on this one. So um, I do plan on trying to make it to ADCOM. I am in Boston tomorrow and not leaving till about 4.30. So depending on traffic, I, I hope that I'm there. I don't know if anyone else is able to attend. Um, but this is one that I do feel a little bit passionately about. I mean, it is, it's our warrant, it's town meeting. I know change is hard, change is scary. Um, but if you just want to come up and kind of talk to us about it, let us know some of your, let us know some of your concerns um, because I don't think the intent was anything that maybe there may be concerns about. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> How's everyone doing? Good. Um, yeah. Sorry we're running late. <laughs> um, yeah, I was at the advisory committee meeting last week for, for another Warren article, and, and this was brought up, and uh, I gave them my opinion. Um, the, the only change really in this Warren article, even though it's written in a different order, is the wording that, um, that the actual meeting of town meeting, uh, not the polls, right. the time can be set by the uh, Board of Selectmen at any time. Um, it's always been set at 7.30. The, the polls are always the first Monday in May. The continued meeting for the town meeting is the second Monday in May, starting at 7.30 at the place designated by uh, the Board of Selectmen. Uh, so it's always been 7.30. Now in the past, there have been discussions about the, the, you know, the time and, and changing it, but you got conflicting people uh, if you started earlier, you have people that are coming home from work, 
trying to get something to eat, you know, maybe see their kids for a moment or in a game, and then getting to town meeting. Um, uh, so the later time was the time that's always been there. One of my major concerns, too, is the board selectmen can pick any time. They can pick two in the afternoon. They can pick four. They can pick six. I think there should be a time certain in the bylaw as to what, what time town meeting starts so that everyone knows it. So, you know, if you change the time, you know, and it passes at the annual town meeting, you know, next year I'd want to, you know, have this board emphasize to the, the town that it's going to be starting um, earlier because I can pretty much guarantee you people will be showing up late thinking it's at 7.30. So it's my feeling that in the bylaw it should be a time certain and not open to flexibility. You know, the rest of it is just rewording and um, authority about continuing adjourned meetings to a time certain, and that's in the state statute anyway, so it's not really uh, necessary. So the, 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 my big concern is, you know, the Board of Selectmen just picking a time at random at any time. And I think it should be a time certain in the bylaw. It, so the intent is obviously never to pick a time at like two o'clock or four o'clock. I mean, let's be real, it would never happen at two schools still in session were held at the high school. Um, you know, I don't see that happening. And if the intent is that we would have a board that would try to pull a fast one or, or try to do something like that, I mean, I would hope and think that would be off the table given, you know, if we're saying no one's going to know if it's at seven versus 7.30, I mean, to say that that the board would try to set a time at four o'clock to try to, you know, not be transparent or, you know, not have people there. You know, we, we need to have it one way or the other. Um, either, you know, everyone's used to a certain time or they're not, you know, I, I understand that. Um, I do think that a little bit of flexibility is good. Sometimes we might have 30 articles. Sometimes we might have five articles. Um, I did go out and look at kind of all of our surrounding towns. Most of the towns were at 7 p.m. There were a couple that were at 7.30. Um, we don't really do any other meetings in town at 7.30. Um, I think times have changed. People aren't commuting into Boston, although you know, I did today. But you know, we're at a different place, quite honestly. I find um, my generation, if I get home and get the kids dinner and sit on the couch, like I'm less apt to get up at 7.30 and, and come out. So I think as a board, I'm trying to kind of keep up with the changing demographic, especially post COVID. Um, you know, I had wanted to allow some flexibility. I, I think seven o'clock is probably where I would go if I was going to make a recommendation, if we do decide we want to be time certain. Um, I like the flexibility. I've heard that ADCOM is now scared of the flexibility, so I'm a little bit worried if we don't put a time certain, it, it could fail. Um, but I think if we're going to fail this, I mean, if we're, if we're going, if the ADCOM is going to not vote for this because they're scared that the board is going to do something like schedule a town meeting at a time to not get people to go, we've got much bigger issues. Um, really, quite frankly, um, it, it seems a little bit like, like a scare tactic. Um, to make it sound like a not, not a good idea when in reality I, I don't think that that would ever happen and if it, if it did, like I said, I think we've got much bigger issues and you know, would we have a quorum um, if, if someone tried, tried to really pull a fast one well, like that? The other question is, is what are you trying to fix? I mean, town meetings are usually done in one night. So it's not as if there's an issue here that needs fixing. You might not think there's an issue. I think that we start late. I think we'd have a better quorum if we started a little bit earlier. And I would even rather be home, you know, at 10, 10 versus 10.30. There's been times I've gotten out of there at 1 a.m. Um, so I like there to be able to be some flexibility depending on, you know, how long the warrant is. Like to me, you know, if we have five articles, we could start at a certain time. But if we've got 30 articles starting earlier, you know, it would make sense in order to get through it in a reasonable time. And you know, to be able to have people that you know have children at home that may be home alone, or to get into work the next day. So um, I would suggest potentially seniors might appreciate yeah. starting a little earlier yeah. too. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I mean, I, I yeah, but then you have. I mean, this is this has been talked about previously. Then you have parents with um, young kids or kids in sports that would rather have it later. You know. And also, I that's think that's anecdotal. I mean, I, yeah, it's maybe. I, th I think it should be a time certain. 
Yeah, I mean, I'm a parent with kids with sports every night. I work full time. I'm a single parent. Um, you know, I think whichever way you go, there's going to be things on both sides. But it's important to me to make a town to town meeting. So if I have to, you know, leave my child's game, I don't think it is going to make a difference really that night, whether I'm there at 630 or or 730. Um, I'm more apt to go if it's earlier, quite frankly. Um, but it's, you know, I definitely get the message. I don't think I think you want it to remain at 730. No, no, no. I okay. want a time certain. A time certain. Okay. I think if you said if you said seven, I'd have no problem with that. Yeah. You know, I just think in, in the past, Board of Selectmen has played games with the with the warrant. They put articles in certain places in the order. Now we've always gone in the order that the Board of Selectmen, you know, uh, put it on the warrant. You know, some towns don't do it that way. Uh, but we've always done it, and I'll continue to do it that way. Mm -hmm. um, but there have been games where articles have put in, in the front of the warrant for reasons, in the back of the warrant for reasons, and things like that. So even though you say, and I've been doing this long enough, saying, oh, this board would never do this, the board changes over. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden they're saying, let's do it at four. Uh, yeah, I and, just... and if it's a long warrant, then you know we adjourn it at some time and continue it to another time. Have we ever done that? Oh yeah. Yeah, like I, I mean, we were there till one in the morning. Yeah. In in my memory, and there doesn't that, seem that was to be... one that was one time. Yeah. And and um, the meeting had the ability to make a motion to adjourn to another time, but they continued to keep going and get it done in, in one night. Also that night there was a concern whether you'd get it a um, quorum at the next meeting. Yeah. And if you don't get a quorum at the next meeting, you haven't completed town meeting. So nothing you do at that town meeting is, is um, finished. So it's not approved. Mm -hmm. You have to finish town meeting and you have to finish all the articles on, on, on town meeting. And there was a concern at that meeting because we had a low turnout that you wouldn't get a, a quorum at that night. So, but yes, there have been um, um, meetings that I've been involved in, not as moderator, that have been continued to, you know, another time certain. Mm -hmm. Does anyone object to seven o'clock as the time? No, certain? I don't. I don't object to seven o'clock. Yeah. And looking around at, at the towns around us, that's where most towns are. I, 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 I have it saved. I don't know if I still have the picture on my phone. I think there might have been one or two towns at at six thirty. Um, but you know, I'm fine with seven. I do think it should be a little earlier. I've I've had people say to me every other meeting's at seven. Like, why is this one at seven thirty? Um, it was decided decades yeah, ago. Yeah, right, <laughs> right. And I know I, I know I wasn't around. Yeah, I, I know. Before all of us. Yeah, I know that it's hard to have the change, but I, I no, think, I think so just easy. even bringing it up. If you, seven if you change it to seven, you know, the first few years, you're just going to keep reminding people, and there'll be people that show up at seven thirty, seven thirty-five, and go, "What's going on?" Yeah. Uh, but eventually, people will get used to it. Yeah. My concern, though, is is every, you know, fifth year, the board says, "Let's start at six and some people don't get it, mm -hmm. and they show up at 7.30, and the budget's gone, and, you know, and they're like, what? Yeah. You know? Uh, so I think it should be a, a time certain. Okay. That, so that's it my sounds like concern. we're good with, if we want to change it, can, can we change that to 7 p.m. then and I'm move that, that forward to yeah. ADCOM? Um, yeah. Because I do, I do think that it's on the later side. I would like to see a little bit of movement on this one, and I think we'll be more successful if we have a time certain based on the, the feedback coming out of that. Okay. Any concerns? No, I think okay. seven's fine. Yeah, I just, my, my big concern was the time certain. No. I just agree with Frank, it should be a time certain. Okay. okay. And I mean, you could, you know, there's been talk about, let's change it to a Saturday. And you talk to the towns, it doesn't change. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't change how many people show up. But just so everyone's clear, it'll be at 7.30 this year. <laughs> 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 this will be for the future. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and again, you, the Board of Selectmen picks where it's going to be. It's almost always up at the high school, but there have been a few at the uh, middle school when we couldn't get the high school okay. for different reasons. And we already have the flexibility <clears throat> on, on that as far as the police. Yep. yep. And so you've always had there. that. Okay. Yeah, I mean, granted, I could have reached out to you. I just asked you if you have concerns in the future, bring them to us, you know, a little bit sooner. That had already gone through Adcom once, that was kind of going through the second time. So I think it'll just make for a smoother process for everyone. Yeah, I just wasn't uh, made aware of it. Uh, you know, I saw it and I was there, so I, I gave him my my opinion. Okay. All right. Good. Good. Okay.
Okay. Change it to seven. Yep, so we'll change that to seven for Agcom, and I'll reach out to Dan. He, he may be watching, but I'll make sure that he knows that this. Right, so on 7.30, just change it to seven and take out or such other time as the Board of Selectmen shall designate. Yes, and can Katie do that before they meet tomorrow? Yes? Yes, Okay, yes. all right, cool. All right, so any other comments? Well, we have you. I mean, we might as well see if any <laughs> other concerns on the warrant or anything else that we need to talk about? Uh, no, not that I've seen. Okay. Either. All right. I think GADCOM's all set to take their positions. So I would just think of make a motion and, and it's, it changed accordingly so that okay. it's clear. Okay. All right. So why don't we um, take... While you're doing it, why don't you change Board of Selectmen to Select Board? We, we can't do it. It hasn't, yeah, been, we, it hasn't been adopted by the yeah. uh, AG's office. And, he hasn't approved and his ballots so are going oh, on really? as Board of Selectmen. So we, all, we talked about that one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that one's all good. It just and that's not, but it is a good... It is a good one to call out that it is intentional. So when okay. you do go to vote, you will see Board of Selectmen and you will see Board of Selectmen on the warrant because it isn't approved yet by the AG's office, so. All right, so why don't we take a Leah. motion? Yes. Excuse me, Madam Chair, may I ask a question? If this is changed for tomorrow, when will the Selectmen sign? Because I will miss the date if you wait till the 25th to sign. Yeah, it needs to be signed before that. So if it's just I need to post page, this then. warrant yeah, by the, the Friday. Board can sign the signature yeah, we can page sign tonight. the signature page tonight. We have it. Yeah. Oh, sure. Okay. okay. Just wanted to make sure I was compliant. Yep. All right. So we'll, there's a motion to on the floor for Article 21 to change the time starting to 7 p.m. Um, so moved. So moved. Okay. Second. Hey. All right. Any further discussion? And, and to remove that other language. All right. Let me let me let me get it up. Or such other time as the board shall so, so designate. Okay. That should be removed. And to remove the other language about um, the time and, well, the, the place is already there, but to remove the time that we select. So moved. So moved. Okay. Second. Second. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. All those in okay. favor? Yeah. Okay. okay. All, right. All right. Great. All right. Great feedback. Thank you, Thank you very right. much. All right. So next. Um, we just need to approve and sign the May 28th warrant. We just had that article for that amendment. I don't think there's anything else that's needed. Anything else, John, Bill, Christina, Katie, to call out for us? Good. We've looked at it so many times now, we may be going cross-eyed, but anything else to call out? Sure. All right, so we do have a motion to approve and sign <laughs> the May 8th, 2023 warrant. Uh, motion to approve and sign the May, May 8th, 2023 <laughs> Annual town meeting warrant. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, great. Madam Chair, we, we will also have the um, the warrant review with, um, that will be also be televised by cable access. We just confirmed um, May 3rd at 1230 in the gala room. Okay, great. And um, Seth, you had asked about planning board. They have a number of public hearings coming up um, on their posted agenda on some of those warrant items. So just calling out. The um, zoning articles do have public hearings, and a number of those are advertised on upcoming meetings for planning board as well. Paige will also be in attendance at that meeting, so she can review those articles at the, the warrant review with John as well. Okay, great. All right, up next we have the Norfolk County COLA pension change. So we've talked about this before. Um, and we had asked for a little bit more information, so we're back tonight to approve the fiscal year. So just for fiscal 2023, um, the 2% increase for the retiree COLA. Everyone remember when we talked about that? It's, it's, it's just for the uh, for those people that are the 18,000. Um, the people, at the, it's for the for lower, the lowest amount, which is $18,000. It's really the the additional money is, is for those folks only. So it's about a $360 impact. Person. So um, the town's liability for fiscal year, the town's liability will increase by approximately 872 and that's over, that's over the lifetime of that. Okay. Right, that change. And that was what we had asked you to follow up on. Right. So it'll go from 3% to 5% as a one-time increase that will then become permanent. Right as allows enacted chapter 269 of the acts of 2022, the town's unfunded actuarial accrued liability and FY26 appropriation are expected to increase by approximately 872,165. So does this take us any further? 
It, it's a possibility it might take it up for an additional one year. Okay. Yeah. And every town in the system, just remind me on this, is being asked to vote on this? Every, every town in, in the system in Massachusetts is being, being asked to vote on it in terms, if you're a part of a county system and if you're part of an individual system as well. And do we know how others have voted? Or have so there... far in, in Norfolk County, we've had 12 people say yes. Okay. Anyone say no? I'm not aware of that. Okay. All right. Um, I don't. I don't have any further questions. I mean, it'll. Def there's definitely an increase, but um, I think this one-time cola is is warranted. So, any other conversation before we take the motion? <clears throat> so, so it's a one-time cola. It's built into the base, but right. the future colas will be based off of that. Off the new no, dollar. Based off, off of that, but it wouldn't be the 5%. It would exactly. be a new, a new call. Right. right. Just want to clarify right. that. So yeah. let's say it's $100, you get the increase. The the 2%, sorry, the 3% in the future is based off the new dollar amount, but right. it's still the 3%, not the 5%. Right. And, and the impact to our pension cost is not going to really affect us until 2025, FY25 or 26. 26, 26, 26 according actually. to the letter. Yeah. Okay. Motion. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> motion to approve the FY23 additional 2% uh, retiree COLA. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. All right. Now we're on to John's first and Bill's last. <laughs> Town manager's update. All right. So uh, I'm gonna, I'll defer to John. Okay. <laughs> He's a new guy. So this is my hard-hitting part of your meeting, right? Yep. So uh, not much in terms of a general update other than what I had said earlier, mm -hmm. making great mm -hmm. uh, rounds, meeting everybody. And uh, I'm open. We'll be meeting with you individually as well. But also as part of that meeting, give some thought to if there's anybody else that you would think that I haven't uh, touched base with that you think I should. Uh, I'm looking for that guidance from you as well. Uh, in terms of the town property use, uh, there's a few things going on. There's the Foxborough softball a uh, car wash that's going to take place at Town Hall on uh, on April 29th from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Uh, then there's the uh, teddy bear picnic on the common. Uh, I'm sorry, that's July 20th from uh, 11, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. And then last but not least, you have the Jay-Z summer concert program, which is Thursday nights uh, beginning on uh, June 8th and running through August uh, 10th. Uh, and those are 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. So... All right. And that's all I have tonight, Madam Chair. And the one thing I did ask was the car wash. This has come up just for a little bit of history. Yeah. Um, you know, we can't do car washes when there are water When there's a water ban. And the so, applicant knows that. Yeah, so it will be subject to there being no water restrictions Correct. at that time. Um, Madam gonna, Chair. Yes. Katie. Um, I did um, talk with Chris, so he is good for us to approve or for John to approve any car washes in April and May, and then we'll kind of move from there. But the week um, of the event, I will reach out to him and Bob, um, who's the department head, department head of water, and just verify that there were still a go, um, and all applicants will know that um, moving forward. Um, okay, great. So that's kind of our process, sure. All right. Bill, anything for you there? I think I said a lot of my stuff the other night on Thursday night. But by the way, I just want to say thanks to everybody that, that was able to make it. I know that some you know folks weren't able to do that, but I appreciate everyone that was there. Um, it's been a great run. I mean, I, it's um, I have great staff, great members of the boards, and um, all the folks that I've worked with in this town have been truly supportive in so many different ways. Um, you know, I my wife said she's watching tonight, so I say hey to my wife who's watching tonight. So, uh, and she never watches these meetings, by the way. But she says I'm going to watch tonight. She might not still be watching. Yeah, she may. She may not. Be. She's going to text me in a second. You watch. You know, she's going to text me whether she's there or not. But, but um, yeah, it's it's. Uh, I'm just grateful for that, and uh, I'm looking forward to a new new life, a new new chapter. I don't think I'm going to take a little bit of a hiatus from town meetings for a while. Uh, it's been a long long run for doing that, but. Um, but again, thanks to everyone for a, for a great uh, run here in Foxborough and, and for an overall career in, in public service. So thank you very much. And good luck to John. John's, John's a great candidate for this job. I'm really glad he's doing it. I've known John a long time and have a lot of faith in his efforts so, and his ability. Okay. Yeah, and thank you to Christine and Paige who <laughs> threw an epic party. It was almost like a wedding. It was awesome. It, it was, was absolutely it was awesome. Really, yeah, it, it was, was cool. really yeah, great. And, and, um, and, and, and to my staff, Katie and, and, and Christina and um, and now in Liz, who's the newest member, um, they, they're just 
tremendous folks, and, and they, they do so many great things for us. I, you know, I, I made the mistake the other night of missing my, my two grandkids and my, and my son-in-law, and I gotta tell you, I'm t saying this on TV so my daughter won't be mad at me anymore, but I just, I truly, it was, it was an oversight in my, in my speech, and I'm really, uh, I really feel so badly about that, but they, of course, are so important to me on so many different levels, as these, as these folks are, have been supporting me since, uh, since I've been here, so uh, thank you to all of you for, for that. Appreciate that. Yeah, so we're lucky Thanks, to Katie. have you. Lucky to have you end your end your career here with us. You've accomplished so much in the almost decade. Um, you leave behind a legacy of unbelievable department heads. Um, I think it speaks to you know, as John said, just the way things are being turned over. Um, you know, you run you run a great shop. Um, it has been an absolute pleasure to work with you. Um, you are a mentor for so many. Um, not only in town, but seeing you kind of in action at MMA and, and everything else that you do, um, it's, it's quite clear how well respected you are in the industry. So thank you, um, thank you for everything that you've done. Um, you truly have become a friend, and I, I don't want to cry, but I really <laughs> have. <laughs> make me cry in the minute here. But so I, I, I really have kind of been pretending this <laughs> isn't, going, isn't happening, um, but unfortunately, you know, it is, and you, you will truly, truly be missed. Thank so you, thank you. Thank you, that. Bill. Thank you all for that. Appreciate that. And don't be a stranger, Bill. Come and see us sometime. No, I, I, it's going to be a little, I'm taking a little hiatus, like I said, just for a while, but, <laughs> a little break. but I'll be around. So, but, and if you ever need anything, you know where to reach me, and um, my phone will always be open to you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Did you change that number, though? You I'm not that? changing my number. Nice I'm, keeping my, I'm keeping my number the same. <laughs> yeah, it's, so right. I'm, just don't, don't have all my business cards anymore. So just, yeah. <laughs> so it doesn't go. And thank you for hanging out for this whole meeting. That's you know, there was a lot going on in this meeting. Yeah. Yeah. So at first, you know, Bill is going to kind of hand it over with some of the, the liquor stuff we haven't seen before. You know, I, I just, I think yeah, it's it good to kind of do it together with just some of the, yeah. the knowledge because this was definitely a, a more complicated meeting. Well, you know, it, and it's in fairness to John, I mean, John really went from the, from the frying pan into the fire, so to speak, because yeah. he, you know, he went from Northborough, he did a, you know, yeoman's work to try and get them ready before their transition. Right. And he, he took off, what, four days <laughs> before he got here, yeah. um, and uh, which is really not a, a fair enough time, unfortunately, but, but I, I'm grateful he did take his time to be here. But, um, but he'll have opportunities later on to take some time off. But, um, and, and the fact that you, know, you do a, a reduced schedule during the summertime is helpful, I think, for him too, so he'll be able to get a little more time in to, to have a, bit, a little more transition for him. Um, so to doing tonight, I, I clearly understood when I looked at the agenda, I said, well, it's a pretty heavy agenda yeah. to get so some stuff you. through. So thank you. Thank you for doing that. No, I'm happy to do it. <laughs> happy to do it. And, and, you know, again, my thanks to the community, you know, to the craft group for everything that they've done, the relationship that we built for the town and, and for them, um, for, the, for the, all the, uh, the, the, for the Snyder Electric, uh, for all the things they've done for us. Um, they've done a tremendous job for the, for the town as well. And they, and I'm grateful for all those relationships. Thank you. All right, great. So for Selectman's update, um, Christina has the annual town report coming out soon. Um, <clears throat> we are right on to town meeting, so John, buckle up. <laughs> okay. Not, not much time, and I think you just closed out your town meeting in Northrow, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah so they got you, they got 63 articles to get through. Oh, so you guys wow. are uh, so <laughs> We only there's only one town meeting a year, and what time did they start? Still. We actually uh, start at six. Okay. We changed it about two years ago uh, for the, a lot of the reasons you discussed yeah. tonight. Interesting. All right, great. Well, 60, so, you know, you're lucky enough to do two town meetings within, uh, essentially. <laughs> <laughs> well, you didn't have to do the other uh, one. Uh, no, yeah, I won't be at North Coast Town. Oh, it hasn't yeah. happened yet. Oh, okay. All right, it's wow. It's in a couple of weeks. Well, so. we think ours is long with 20-something. 63 oh. is a doozy. So, well, um, spoiled you guys. <laughs> So Hazardous Waste Day is coming up on April 15th. I saw Chris's, the, the signs on the common, which is great to kind of bring some awareness to that. And I did see the farewell B Bill Keegan sign on the common too. That was um, the kind of neat, and, and the billboard. The billboard. Oh, that was awesome. Yeah, was the like, billboard. <laughs> <laughs> we did Thanks, get him a, a painting pretty. of Town Hall. I don't know if he likes it or not, but it's hard to get yeah. the guy that has everything something. That, that, um, that, was, that, was, I, that was really meant something to me. I the mean, because it's beautiful. It is. It's beautiful. It's well done. You know, plus it's a building that I helped build. You know, yeah, exactly. So it well, me, it, means, it meant something to yeah. me that way. And, you know, I have pictures. I was, I was saying this earlier that I have pictures from every one of the communities I've served in. They've all given me a picture some way along the line that I actually have my office at home. So this sort of rounded this one out. So it was, yeah, that was, so a, good, local that was a good painter, decision. Local painter, we commissioned her um, and decision. she did that. And uh, Doc was able to work with um, 
Well Walking done. Plaza's well office too well for, for a flag, and you know we have to well get done. some kind of like little tchotchke that was well to done. to his office with the rest Great. of those. So, <laughs> so thank you. Thank you. Um, any other items from the <clears throat> blackboard on seconds um, update? Nope. All right, and we've already gone through uh, action items, so I yep. think we just Good. need a motion to adjourn. <clears throat> We're out before nine. Okay, motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank Aye. you. Thank, thank you, Bill. You.